I read kind of an insane amount this month. Like, I... Hello, lovely people. My name's Nicole, and like I said, I've had kind of an insane reading month. So, to avoid this being ridiculously long, I'm just gonna jump right in. I'm gonna try and keep things short and sweet and not go too into detail. So the first book I read this month was Pip Bartlett's Guide to Magical Creatures by Jackson Pierce and Maggie Stiefvater, which I actually went to an event for and got it signed. Yay! Um, this is about a little girl who can talk to magical creatures. I thought it was super cute, a fantastic middle grade, very, very, very much enjoyable. Um, it d isn't quite as, like, deep and emotionally connecting as, I think, like, a book like Percy Jackson is, but it was a really, really fun read, and I'll definitely be reading more when the sequels come out. I gave this four stars. Next was a book that I read for school, and that was Rendezvous with Rama by Arthur C. Clarke. This is about, um, humans see this weird spaceship thing floating around in the sky, and they go to investigate what's inside. As ha hard sci-fi goes, I really enjoyed this. Um, it had a great sort of exploring, discovering new things, wonder sort of vibe about it. Um, one of the things that I found really interesting about it, and I'm not quite sure whether or not I liked it, was that there was absolutely no character development. There was no characterization. You barely got to know someone's name. Um, and I, it, it was weird and different, and I'm not sure what I liked, whether or not I liked it, but I definitely liked sort of the wonder and new investigation kind of thing that was happening inside of this spaceship. I gave this four stars. Next, I read what may be one of my favorite books that I've read all year, and that was A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Maas. I'm not gonna go at all into detail about this, just know that it's a uh, Beauty and the Beast retelling, and I really, really, really loved it. I will link my full video review in the doobly-doo. I, of course, gave it five stars. <laughs> then I read Saga Volume 3, and then later in the month, Saga Volume 4, um, by Brian K. Vaughan, illustrated by Fiona Staples. These are the continuations of the Saga series, the last two that are out right now. The next one comes out this summer. Um, and it's sort of a, uh, Romeo and Juliet fall in love and have a baby in space kind of thing, and it's so good. Um, I definitely think this last one was a, more focused on some of the storylines that I don't really care about as much with the, the TV head people. I would have liked to see a little bit more of the Will and Gwyneth, um, but all the same, I definitely really, really enjoyed these. I gave volume three five stars and volume four four stars. Next, I read The Air by Kiara Cass, which is a continuation of the selection series. Um, this is about the main characters from that series. Their kid is now having a selection of her own, and so it's kind of cool we get to see it from the different perspective of someone who is actually the sort of center of the selection as opposed to one of the contestants. Um, I really enjoyed seeing that aspect. I definitely have my favorite of the boys, Kyle. <clears throat> um, and I'm definitely looking forward to how everything wraps up. The ending was sort of like, ripped my heart out. Um, on the topic of Elin, uh, I, there were a couple moments where I found her a little annoying. Um, she was very insistent on how much she was anti the selection for a really long time, and it did get on my nerves a bit, but overall, I understand why she was frustrated and why she made some of the less mature decisions that she did. Um, and like I said, I am very excited to see what happens next. I gave this four stars. Now, getting into the bout of books readathon, the books I read during that, starting with The Ocean at the End of Lane by Neil Gaiman. This is one that's been sort of sitting on my shelf getting hyped for a really long time and I finally just decided, you know, it's only like 150 pages, might as well just read it. And I'm really glad I did. It's not the kind of thing I normally read, but it is, it was really, really interesting. Um, very sort of darkly whimsical, I think is the best way that I can describe it. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I love Neil Gaiman's style of writing, so I gave this, I think, five stars. The next things I read, I do not have physical copies of because I just got them on iBooks, and those are the three Percy Jackson Kane Chronicles crossover novellas by Rick Riordan. Those, that would be The Son of Sobek, 
the stuff of Seraphis and Crown of Ptolemy, which just came out this month. Um, I really, really enjoyed these. It's so much fun to see from these characters' points of view again, because for Percy and Annabeth, we didn't get their point of view in Blood of Olympus, which was kind of sad. Um, and so it was really good to read from their point of view again. Uh, the first two were actually a reread for me, but it was just, it makes my little heart flutter. Um, and it was so much fun in Crown of Ptolemy, all the times that we saw Percy just thinking about Annabeth. So I gave the first two of those four stars and the third one five stars. Next, I read Naomi and Eli's No Kiss List by Rachel Cohn and David Levithan. I really enjoyed this. This is about a girl and a guy who are best friends. They've been best friends forever and the girl is kind of in love with the guy. Only problem is he's super gay and I really enjoyed this. Uh, there were a number of times where I thought the characters got a little annoying and stubborn but overall I thought it was really good. I, I really appreciated that it focused more on the friendship aspect of things and not on the romance but I gave this four stars. The next thing I read was Deadly Class by Rick Remender and Wes Craig. Um, this is about a teenager who goes to a school of assassins and it was very dark and sexy and there were a number of things that I liked, a number of things that I didn't like. Um, the, the art style is very sort of intense and I think it really worked well for this. Uh, I'm definitely excited to read the next one but it just didn't really get that emotional connection for me. Um, so I think I gave it four stars. The next thing I read was None of the Above by I.W. Gregoria. This is about a girl who, when she's in high school, finds out that she is intersex. And then shortly thereafter, the rest of the school finds out too. And she goes from being the most popular girl in school to being a total outcast. Um, I enjoyed this. There were a number of things about it that I think were done really well. It sort of talked about a difficult topic and sort of a taboo topic and I think it did it really really well. It approached it, it approached the subject really well and there are a number of places where it provided really good helpful information um, which is really good and there were diverse characters in both gender and sexuality which I really appreciated um, and I think this would be a great resource for people who were struggling with the same thing as the main character. Um, and so I gave this four stars. Next thing I read was Nimona by uh, Noelle Stevenson and I've been following Noelle Stevenson on Twitter for a while and I absolutely love her. I love her art style. I really need to read Lumberjanes. Um, and if you don't know, she is the person who did the drawings on the fangirl cover. So super cute. Her art style is fantastic. Here's sort of a sampling of, yeah, it's really cool. Um, and I just, the characters in this are all so funny, especially the main character, Nimona, is this adorable little, like, teenager shapeshifter girl, and she goes to meet with this evil villain guy, and she's like, hey, I'm gonna be your sidekick. He's, his response is, of course, um, who are you? Don't need a sidekick. She's like, yep, yep, I'm gonna be your sidekick. By the way, I can I can turn into a shark. Surprise! And and she's just generally a bamf, and she's adorable and hilarious and very like impulsively violent in a hilarious way. And I cannot recommend this enough. I absolutely love this. Everyone should go read it because it's hilarious and heartwarming and amazing. And I gave it five stars. The next thing I read was We Are All Made of Molecules by Stephen by Susan Nielsen. Um, this is about two teenagers, one of whom is a the sort of stereotypical popular girl and the other one is a sort of, uh, he's a gifted kid. He's been going to a school for gifted kids for a really long time and their parents are moving in together and the guy is excited to get to know his new sister and she is really upset about the fact that he is now invading her space and going to her school and she doesn't want anyone to know. Um, there were a number of things about this that I liked overall. I think I liked the story. Um, it dealt with a number of topics that I think were really powerful and 
um, difficult to talk about, especially with kids that are so young. These kids are only like 14. And I think it did that really well. Um, but I think just all the characters for me felt a little bit too pushed to the extreme. The girl, Ashley, was just a little too bitchy 14 year old. Her, her and her friends felt like something that was out of like the click books. Um, they were very petty, very like catty in sort of an immature way, and Stuart felt like he was just a little too awkward. Um, and they were things like th those kinds of things just felt a little bit unrealistic, which unfortunately only made this a three and a half star book for me. Next, I read an entire trilogy, and that is the Ruby Red Trilogy, Precious Stones Trilogy um, by Kristen Gear. This is, she's a German author whose books were translated into English. Um, a lot of people have talked about this before. It's about a girl who suddenly finds out that she can time travel. I went sort of back and forth on this series. Overall, I liked it. I think it was a lot of fun. Um, there were a number of times where the main character got on my nerves a bit or Gideon got on my nerves a bit, uh, particularly at the beginning of the third book. It was kind of just like, wow, you are very emotional about this guy who you've known for a week. Calm down a little bit. Um, because, because it felt kind of insta-lovey because it was pointed out near the end of the, like, second one that the entire thing takes place over the course of, like, two or three weeks. Um, and it feels like it's taking place over a longer period of time when you're reading it, but then just that knowledge that it's like three weeks, that's really quick time for you to be so like extreme about your feelings. That aspect was a little rough for me, um, but overall I really really enjoyed it. Um, I definitely recommend it if you want something that's fun and cute and just just really enjoyable with the cool time travel aspect. I really liked the historical elements. So I gave Ruby Red three and a half stars, Sapphire Blue four stars, and Emerald Green three stars. Next, I read Extraordinary Means by Robin Schneider. I absolutely adore Robin Schneider, so I was so excited to get my hands on this. This is about a boy named Lane and a girl named Sadie who knew each other back in camp, back from camp several years ago, and now are reunited at Latham House, which is a place for teenagers with tuberculosis. And they have a special, like, strain of tuberculosis that is totally drug resistant, and so they don't have a cure. They just have to hang out at Latham House and see if they get better. Um, and it's about them sort of reconnecting and falling in love, and I absolutely adored this. I thought Sadie and Lane were both super, super cute. Um, I definitely connected with both of them on different levels. Um, one of the things that I really liked about Sadie was that she had sort of that Manic Pixie Dream Girl image to the other kids at Latham House, um, but you got to see from her point of view and how she, she knew that, you know, when she was back at home, she wasn't that girl. She was just that random girl who, like, sits in the corner and no one really cares about. Um, but at Latham House, she was that girl that everyone knows and everyone kind of wants to be, and she and her friends were something special, and she was really insecure about losing that, because she loved having that image, and I thought I thought that was a really powerful thing to see, sort of, the other perspective. Um, I was really worried in the beginning of her getting to Manic Pixie Dream Girl, but I think the way that that was approached as sort of the, she had that image, but she wasn't really feeling it on the inside, um, thought it was really really cool to see that and I really really loved this um it made me cry like a baby um I didn't stop crying for like half an hour after I finished it um so I definitely gave it five stars next I read The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adia this is inspired by Arabian Nights and it's about a girl who lives in a kingdom where every single night uh, the 18 year old king marries a new wife and every morning she is found dead and the previous night the king murdered her best friend, so now she's gonna marry him and she's gonna get her revenge. But things aren't necessarily all they seem. I really enjoyed this. Um, I thought that the 
evolution of their relationship was really gorgeous and I really just felt them sort of connecting. There were a number of times in the beginning where I got frustrated because I was just like, communicate, communicate with each other, have a conversation, maybe. Um, but certain reveals were made that I really um, liked the reveals and uh, the ending was heartbreaking and I need the second one now. I think it's like going to be a duology, I heard. Then I read some lovely summary contemporaries, starting with To All the Boys I've Loved Before, which was a reread, so that I could read P.S. I Still Love You, both by Jenny Han. Um, these are about a girl who's, uh, who, when she is done with having a crush on a guy, she writes him a letter, puts it in a way in her closet, and never looks at it again, and then she's over him, and then one day those love letters get sent out. Um, and there are so many things I love about this series. Um, there's a great fake dating aspect sort of near the beginning that is one of my favorite tropes. I think it's absolutely hilarious and adorable, and I really love it. I gave this one four stars, um, and I gave this one four stars too. The thing about the main character, Laura Jean, is that first of all, I want everything in her wardrobe. And second of all, she makes me want to eat cookies and like I want a recipe book with all the cookies and delicious things that she makes in this. And third of all, she is kind of immature. And that's something that people harp on about a lot when, she, when they're talking about these books. Um, she's kind of immature, she makes a lot of decisions that aren't necessarily the most well thought through, but I think it works for her because she's 16 years old. Um, and I think she acts like a teenager. She acts like a teenager who has no idea what she wants and has some really, you know, young, naive views about love because she's never really actually been in a mutual loving relationship before. And does she act really young? Yes, not all teenagers are perfectly, like, figured out and emotionally mature and don't expect that from all teenagers, because they're not. And I think Laura Jean is a really good representation of those teenagers who don't have all their shit together. And I really, really love it. And the final book I read this month was The Fill-In Boyfriend by Casey West. This is super cute. It's about a girl whose boyfriend dumps her right before prom. And because she doesn't want her friends who've never met this boyfriend before to think she was lying about this perfect boyfriend that she's been talking about for a while, she grabs a guy who was just hanging out in the parking lot after dropping off his sister and has him pretend to be her boyfriend. And then after the dance, she can't stop thinking about him. And I really loved this. It was super, 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 super cute. The, the relationship just felt so like genuine. Um, the way that they sort of, like, bonded as friends, and there were, like, those background feelings, but it, they really felt like they were genuinely good friends, and her friendship with Beck was amazing. Um, the only thing was I wanted more of an ending. I wanted more, I wanted to know what happened to, um, Gia's other friends, and I wanted more of an ending with Jules. So yes, I wanted more of a, more of a finish but I really, really loved it. I gave it 4.5 stars. So, those are all the books I read this month. This video is already getting long. Uh, hopefully I can edit it down. So I'm not gonna do big long outro. I'm just gonna say thank you for watching. Comment and let me know what you read this month or what you thought of these books. I love you and I will see you later. Bye.